Oh, you guys are sluggish Give it to us, Charlie. Yeah, I'm tired as fuck. This is the official podcast, episode 181, I believe. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the money. This is a thrilling adventure with three friends today. Andrew will not be joining us. So, to pick up the slack, Jackson had something fucking exhilarating to talk about. Yeah, uh, so Charlie's music video just went live where he hugs a body <laughs> pillow. How about that? Uh, can you believe that shit? Yeah, crazy. That's pretty wild, Jackson. Yeah, but now, wild. you told us that you had a second topic even better. No, I can't oh, believe yeah. it. Uh, Star Wars, the Clone Wars just ended, and uh, oh, what God. an episode. What a finale. Kai, you wanted me to bring a topic? I brought a topic, <laughs> Star Wars. How about Fuck that? You. I can't so even Jackson, believe it. Jackson and I were talking behind the scenes, and I showed him my muted words on Twitter. And mm -hmm. Jackson can vouch for this. Literally the only words I have ever muted on Twitter are Star Wars related. Because I got just... <laughs> what I a got fucking so, killjoy. I got it's, so it, fucking he's, sick he's, and tired of it. It's because he doesn't want to get spoiled on the lore. Yeah, that's, that's it. It, it. He's... It's so fucking lame. When he says he's muted Star Wars, it, it's literally just a whole list of Star Wars words, not just like the general term Star Wars. It's like Yoda, Force Awakens, Skywalker, <laughs> Last Jedi, Kylo Ren, Mandalorian. It's yeah, good. And it's also the like here. a little tag underneath it forever. You, you're not even like giving it a six month lenience phase or anything. Like you might like it in six months. <laughs> Fuck it's just that. forever. You banned it forever. No, here's it's my pro up. tip for improving everybody's timeline. Here, mute Yoda, Force Awakens, Skywalker, Last Jedi, Kylo Ren, Mandalorian, Star Wars. No one's going on about any of that anymore. Yeah, no, I haven't seen anyone talk about Yoda were. or the fucking Mandalorian. First of all, you just said the made of. May oh, this is so cringe just to even say it. May the fourth be with you crap just a couple of days ago where Twitter was entirely big just day, about this day. crap again. No thanks. I opt out because Why for do a you while, hate fun? I don't hate fun. I just hate seeing the same exact meme throughout like I'm not exaggerating. This is not hyperbole. Literally every second or third tweet was about that fucking franchise for a while. On my timeline, from people I follow for completely unrelated reasons. Just everybody just sharing the meme of that green little gremlin. I just stopped <laughs> caring, oh, man. Oh, baby Yoda is so cute, man. How could you say that? You I don't mean, think he's cute? You guys have your fun. I, I'm opting out. What is your fun? What do you do for fun? Well, he didn't huh? mute Jar Jar Binks, so he has good taste there. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fun. <laughs> I only want to see Jar Jar. <laughs> see a man of I mean, taste. I think we all want to see a little bit more Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day. Yeah. Well, I, I, I still, I, I still don't understand why. Why does it matter that much to you what people are talking about on Twitter? Like, if well, people are talking about Baby Yoda, I can definitely see that. It just gets frustrating. Well, it doesn't. You, don't you, have to you look. guys can talk about it. It's not as if I'm going around reporting people or trying to get people in trouble. I just, for me myself, I don't want to see it on my timeline anymore, man. When I go on there, I want to see. You know, the cute kitten accounts, maybe some game developers whose work I really enjoy in seeing and that sort of stuff. Not fucking the same dumb meme for the 50th time within the minute. It just got too much after a while. Pussy. You're one of them. Well. <laughs> I never post about Star Wars. Never. I just keep it locked up inside me. Mm. And half of the reason I don't post ever about it or talk about it is because I'm afraid of disappointing my, my Kaya-san. I don't want to disappoint you. <laughs> so you that's why I keep it locked Kaya up inside. Son? Yeah. You're like my uh, otaku. Jackson, is your right? addiction is what? getting bad. I don't know. We were... So sometimes I send you clips of, you know, politicians doing goofy shit. And... I think last yeah. time I did this, you, you compared our current political climate to the Rebel Wars or something from Star Wars. And I, <laughs> I just immediately closed our DMs. I rolled my eyes and I went, OK, he, maybe that he was two days ago. First of all, <laughs> I was sleep deprived, but that was also a joke, you dipshit. Jesus. <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely a joke. Let me find it. Okay. Oh, well, we're talking about politics, so I can't really I don't really want to. 
go into the nitty gritty about it, but I, I basically, <laughs> I related the political climate in America at the moment to feeling like the Clone Wars in Star Wars. And then Kaya's <laughs> next, Kaya's next response was, okay, I'm closing our DMs. And then he never responded. <laughs> Dude, it's like you, you, you were talking about, you know, the politics being so divisive and divided these days. And I thought you were going to say something deep. And instead I get more of this deep. fucking consumer bullshit. Well, Clone Wars is deep, to be fair. It is very deep. It was very deep. Yeah. I can see where Jackson was going. You know, last week we talked about um, there being a lot of people who think the Zack Snyder movies are amazing and they are actually the pinnacle of cinematography and such. Mm -hmm. Did you guys know that there's really a gigantic chunk of people who really do think that The Last Jedi is the best movie ever made? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? I thought That's that was not like... Surprising. I thought that was like two groups of people, the ones that really just hated the fucking thing and the ones that just felt kind of lukewarm about it. But I had no idea that there were people who they get genuinely mad if you criticize the movie. They think it is the best movie, like better that's than The Godfather. Yeah, yeah, that's fair, I guess. Not not just every movie, everything. You're talking about subjective opinions. Yeah, but they think well, it's objective. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't even say it's everything. It's every, like, big budget movie. There's always going to be that group of people that think it's the best thing that's ever been made. Ever. Hmm. Still, it's weird. I mean... Yeah. I, I was on profiles of actual film students and people who make indie films, whatever it may be, and they, they talk about that movie as if it's just the... Whatever, the holy grail of cinema. And it struck me as odd. You'd get along with them, I mean, I guess, it is, Jackson. It is an achievement mm -hmm. that sunk... Well, it didn't sink, but it really started to poke holes at a massive franchise. So, it did accomplish something pretty wild and spectacular. That mm. fucking... Uh, you always say that, but the franchise has been marred by those holes being poked into it. Like, everyone hated the prequels. Still doing fine after that. Yeah, true. It was a really extreme, extremely high demand for Star Wars after the prequels. So, I don't think anything can kill Star Wars at this point. You're probably mm. not wrong. Yeah, I don't Well, they're see definitely it. trying their best, so we will see if Star Wars can die. Not true. Mandalorian was good. Clone Wars was good. I'm talking about the uh, movies, Jackson. Fallen Fuck. Jedi was good. Jackson is confused because he's consumed literally every Star Wars offshoot and spin-off <laughs> and piece of Star Wars branded bubblegum. Yeah, that's true. Very exposed to it. Okay. Have you guys seen, uh, God, I'm so sick of this man too, but have you guys seen Elon Musk's baby and that whole shabla? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. X-A Archangel. How do you pronounce it? X-A Archangel. Or x a Archangel. Wait, why do you keep yeah. asking? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Pronounce it again. Because it doesn't sound like a fucking name. Don't blame me. It doesn't sound like a name. Well, obviously it's not a fucking name. It's two fucking super uh, unique Striving people coming up with a unique name that's gonna fucking ruin their kids growing up childhood shit. And it's so just before we started talking here, when you're uh, <laughs> off mic, we, we just mentioned how when you're trying that hard to be unique and you're just mixing every color, you just end up with brown. They just tried to be so unique that it ended up looping back into mundane Tumblr territory, right? It's like Elon yeah, Musk just stuck his dick into Tumblr. So I want. <laughs> In this tweet from his girlfriend, uh, Grimes, this is Grimes, I guess her name is. Uh, so first of all, she has all sorts of goofy ass ASCII art in her username. Her profile picture is a anime profile. And she she's philosophizing about why she picked this name is X, the unknown variable. AI would and she was that weird symbol that's like a merger of A and E. She says, that's my elven spelling of AI, love, and or artificial intelligence. A-12, precursor to SR-17, our favorite aircraft. No weapons, <laughs> no defenses, just speed. Just Great speed. in battle. But non-violence. Plus A equals Archangel, my favorite song. Um, emoji, swords and rat, metal rat. And then Elon corrects her. He goes, uh, SR-71, but yes. <gasps> she got so, it wrong? Yeah, so not only is she trying so cringe-worthily hard, but she's not even getting it right. 
I don't know. These people are weird, but it's I guess it's entertaining to watch and at the people end of the day. Elon, like to Elon be Musk unique. is also Elon Musk has already got like six kids as well, so he's just adding I thought he hated overpopulation and stuff yeah, like that. He wanted to get he, away from Earth because of overpopulation. He's I didn't hypocrite. know this. He's got seven kids. I honestly thought he was this lonely bachelor kind of guy, but he apparently had seven children in total, one of them died. So this is his technically seventh child. I don't know the others' names, but I assume that they're not. They're normal called. names, I bet. Yeah, it's probably not a fucking barcode like this kid. And then this is just such. Yeah, that kid is gonna end up like Jaden Smith, the fucking it's twelve gonna be, year old it's philosopher. It's gonna be like they've got to be just trolling or it's like a publicity stunt or some dumb shit right like the kids actually named something normal behind the scenes i, 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 I highly fucking doubt it this is the guy that just tweeted tesla stock is too high and crashed it <laughs> it's not a publicity stunt this dude is he's fucking smoked himself silly apparently joe rogan ruined him <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, one blunt on joe yeah. rogan's ruined his life well he was also on joe rogan and good. He threw his girlfriend under the bus immediately. Joe asked him, so what's up with the fucking name? And Elon just went, well, my partner picked it, not me. <laughs> his contribution oh, really? was A12, the precursor to the SR-71, he said. <laughs> great. Oh, wait, he was just he was just on Joe Rogan yeah. again. Mm -hmm. oh, Joe was laughing about the name. Did he, uh, did he do anything wacky and, and goofy? Like last time? I don't think so. Just talked about the name. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I mean, fuck. Good for him. You know, I, I don't even feel like being too cynical about this. He's a dad now, again. Yeah. <laughs> for the seventh time. Yeah. yeah. He's getting good at it. <laughs> what a hero. <laughs> <laughs> this one will survive. <laughs> he, no weapons, no defenses. But it's got Just speed. Just speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the episode title. <laughs> Archangel, my favorite song. <laughs> Jesus Christ, cringe. Okay, have you guys seen these murder hornets now? Loose in America? Heard about them. I, I, murder hornets? Yeah. I don't know too much that about sounds them. sounds cool. Uh, let, let, wait, let me guess what it is. I'm going to assume it's a... Like a bicycle gang, not a not a bicycle as in like the push <laughs> bikes, but like a, a bike gang, <laughs> bikers of uh, hard bicycle gang yeah, bikers. Is that what you guys call them in Australia? Is that your cute term for bikers? No, is bicycle no, we crew? Don't. I, no, we call them bikies. <laughs> 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 That's worse. But uh, uh, yeah, that was just on me. That was that was Jackson slang apparently. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so I'm going to assume it's a bikey gang, mm -hmm. and they're, they're hardened criminals. I think I think that's a cool bike, uh, like a bikey gang uh, name. Murder the Hornets? Hornets or, yeah, Murder Hornets, or whatever you said. Anything with Hornets is a cool name. Kind so of. So was I right? It's not, it's not a gang. It's not a bicycle gang. Yeah, no, it's, but, it's a literal Hornet, Jackson. So these no. are, I guess, better known by... They're Asian hornets, but somehow they made their way into America. Somehow, I don't know if they boarded a plane. I don't know how they ca came here. And now they <laughs> hijacked a plane. So they're they're mean motherfuckers. So they're like <laughs> much bigger than you know honeybees and such. And apparently, what they do is they just go into a honeybee hive, decapitate all the honeybees, and then just leave. Just like you know, all the do hornet. Uh, is there a difference between a hornet and a wasp? Uh, Wasps are the useless so. ones, right? Well, so are hornets. Neither so are hornets. Yeah, neither one of them do anything besides kill and leave. <laughs> hornets might just be another name for wasp. I'm not sure there. Yeah, me neither. But I was reading an article by some biologist who was observing this, uh, and he was talking about how he cracked open one of the hives that, you know, he knows he noticed that none of the bees were flying in and out anymore, and he opened it up and he saw just a bunch of fucking bee heads all over the place <laughs> like this fucking thing like single-handedly just flew into the hive and killed everyone just john wicked them <laughs> and now these fuckers they're loose i don't know what it is with bees man like these poor fuckers it's always them getting killed in troves remember there was a for a while there was like this bee shortage or bees were still dying there still is yeah and so i think marble hornets were on the case murder why hornets, can't you say murder yeah there you go i don't know i got it
Mar- I think Marble Hornets is the Slender Man thing, so it's my childhood rearing up. A Marble so Hornet? Watch that. Marble. <laughs> Marble Hornets, the YouTube channel. Marble Hornets. You don't remember that? No. Uh, no. It was like a big Slender Man viral video series back in like early 2010. Marble. So, by the way, yeah, I don't know if you guys also saw the video of the bees fighting back, though. Apparently, there is one high, well, one species of bees, I guess, in Japan that have figured out a way to combat these wasps and what they do is so when a wasp enters the hive one of the bees will basically act like bait and sacrifice itself and then when the hornet attacks it it's distracted so all the other hundreds of bees they jump on the hornet and they encase it in their bodies right they form like a cocoon around the hornet like a Agent Smith and Matrix Reloaded when they when he was piling himself on top of Neo, and then they start buzzing and vibrating their bodies and heating the Hornet up, <laughs> and the bees <laughs> have a higher heat tolerance than the Hornets, so only a difference of two degrees when they're like buzzing yeah, and heating the Hornet it. up, it gets cooked alive, basically, and it dies. That's metal. That how, is how do they metal. even come up with that strategy? I don't know, Fuck. but it's a high risk one because, like you said, they're only two degrees off cooking themselves too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucking. That's great though. But it also, it it like it still takes a hundred of them to kill one wasp. So if two yeah. wasps come in, or or, or or even a small group, I'm then they're sh- fucked. I'm sure their upper echelon of command is coming up with little weapons they can use in the future. It's like Bugs Life. Yeah. <laughs> They need to adapt. They have little guns. Weapons of mass destruction. Little nukes going off in little... <laughs> <laughs> little honey knives. cannons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's so cool. I, lo- I-, I love these little, like, uh, animal kingdom wars between species that are just going on without us knowing, really, and how they adapt to each other. It's interesting. Yeah, and then, <laughs> as we are humans, we-, we decided to just have some fun with it. Somebody stuck a hornet in a little glass cage with a praying mantis. And the praying mantis fucked it up. It ate that thing really? alive. Yeah. And... Yeah, praying mantis are, are like master hunters. Mm, they're such creepy looking fucks too. I mean, if, if, if you took every sociopath on the planet and somehow turned them into a bug, it would be a praying mantis. They all look so fucking creepy. But the thing is, so... Bees, they have... As far as I know, they have brains, but then they also have like, not not, not brains, but some sort of an organ that extends into their bodies. So even when you uh, decapitate them or crush their heads, they can still technically live a little longer. So it's just creepy watching this praying mantis basically eating the bee's head alive. And it was, it had lost half its head and it was still trying to fight and get out of the praying mantis's grasp. Well, that little sociopath was eating it. That's fucked. I'm pre- Speaking of the fucked up things wasps do, I'm pretty sure there's a type of wasp that uh, like finds, what do you call them? Like little little worms or whatever, like little uh, butterfly. What? It, yeah, worms. The caterpillars. That's it. Mm. Little caterpillars, and and it lays its eggs inside the caterpillars and leaves them alive and uses them as little incubators for like wasp eggs. Yeah. So there's just a whole bunch of fucking caterpillars out there with wasp eggs in them waiting to burst from them. Wasps are fucked up, dude. They are it's, fucked up. There's there no also, Geneva Convention for wasps. They, they do whatever it takes. Yeah, there's also like a parasite. Maybe it is the wasps too. But do you guys know the one that like hypnotizes their prey? Where it seeks out one of those caterpillars, puts its eggs in it, but it also releases a chemical that basically turns a caterpillar into a zombie while the larva is growing inside of it. And what There's it does is... Th- yeah, yeah, but the creepy part is like, it compels the caterpillar to climb on top of... Or maybe it was a snail, whatever. It compels it to climb on top of a... On top of plants and just signal itself, basically make colorful displays so to be seen by birds and to get eaten. So that... Oh, yeah, so then so then the, uh, the parasite is in the bird. The eggs, then. Yeah, like how the, yeah. how the fuck does that even happen? It's so that elaborate, insane. yeah. How does evolution guide your species to that kind of consistent fucked up behavior? It's immoral. <laughs> it's immoral? <laughs> Speaking of immoral, I hate it. it's immoral to cruise the internet while having all of your data being open to prying eyes. But luckily there's a solution, isn't there, Kaya? 
That's goddamn right. And that solution is expressvpn.com slash official. I'm rocking it right now. I never don't have it on. I have it on my phone. I don't even have to put it on my uh, PlayStation or whatever because you can enable it in your router. You can have it on every device in your house if you don't feel like setting it up uh, individually on every device. Putting it on your router, by the way, is also a good way for, you know, in case you have visitors over, they don't even have to set anything. They're just, if they connect to your Wi-Fi, they have it on by default. Yeah, Wi-Fi, uh, uh, sorry. ExpressVPN is good, man. I use it to just circumvent all the region blocks that annoy me sometimes. Because of European laws now, no matter what website I go to, I can't read it anymore. Unless I have a VPN. Basically, all news sites, all they do is tell me, we're sorry, this content is no longer available in your region due to the, 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 the rules. And it boils down to they're not allowed to use cookies anymore. And most websites are just too lazy to fix it. So I just use ExpressVPN to get around it. Easiest shit. Go on Netflix. Sometimes the VPN is faster than even my actual uh, internet without the connection. Plus... I, I, do you really want the ISP knowing what you're up to? Do you really want companies? Do you really want some uh, websites that you may be perusing, knowing your IP address and collecting data on you? That's what they're doing right now. For them, it's a gold rush, man. Everybody is inside. Everybody is downloading things, watching things, and they're watching you. They're collecting your data while you're holed up inside. You're purchasing history. Everybody's shopping online now. So be clever. Get expressvpn.com slash official. You know the whole spiel. I pay for it happily, even though they offered me a free thing promotionally. So you can go to expressvpn.com slash official and get three months off your yearly plan. Three free months, basically, which is a great deal. Pay once, get it for a whole year, set it up. Oh, by the way, the setup is so easy. Download, install, hit the red button. Done. Boom. Nice. What's yes. that link again, Kaya? expressvpn.com slash official beautiful extra three months free on a one year package mm -hmm. nice I have a topic for you boys uh, you remember when I told you my dad built a racing simulator mm -hmm. yeah I remember that well he's become a fucking monster he won his first major race at Talladega yesterday taking it over a professional NASCAR driver he sent me. Wait, he was competing against a NASCAR driver? Yeah, he was competing against an. I forgot the name, but he was competing against a pro NASCAR <laughs> driver who's like a big eye racer now. And my dad, on the last lap approaching the finish on the last turn, he spun out the pro NASCAR driver and the first place <laughs> guy and sweeped in. Just fucking <laughs> greased right by him. It was so beautiful. That, so. Do you think how much of that do you think translates to uh, to the real world? Like if you put him in an actual car now, a lot. do you think yeah, do you think he could win? My, yeah, my my dad grew up racing, so the fact that he's doing well uh, in i racing doesn't surprise me. Like he's literally uh, raced his whole life. But take take someone someone other than your dad and put them in the seat. I feel like it would be significantly different to putting yourself in like in the actual, you know, racing seat cuz then there's like all those uh you know, gravitational pressures and G-forces and shit when you're swinging around turns. Oh, well, yeah. Whereas if you're sitting at a computer, it's a lot more... The driving itself uh, translates, but not, like, the atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, unless my dad wants to put, like, a sauna up there to simulate sweat with, like, a fucking centrifuge or something, I don't, I don't really know how you'd recreate that in a simulator. Does mm. the seat move at all? You can... There are simulators that do. My dad's doesn't, though. Well, time well, to the invest. next step is to get like an aircraft simulator because those move and shit and you can mm -hmm. like simulate it crashing. Why don't... <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what he wants. <laughs> Every mistake and he feels the impact. <laughs> After it's his like, first race, he breaks all his bones. It's, it's basically just a modified course. trash compactor that you sit in and every once in a while it just fucking squashes you a little bit. <laughs> it ignites a fire when you crash. You have to have a pit crew ready to take out the fires. So why? how come that now that we have all of this technology, we have high speed connections between devices and such, why not just keep racers safe where they can control their cars remotely? And then we could make everything <laughs> much so more lame. dangerous. Uh, it is lame, but... You, it's you, not dangerous because there's no one in the car. There's can, no danger. No, the I only mean, dangerous well, to the fucking cars themselves. Okay, so when I mean dangerous, I mean just more extreme, like ramps and jumping through hoops oh, of fire yeah, yeah. during an NASCAR race. You know, if the, if the driver that, is if safe... We're, if, we're aiming, 
if we're aiming for that, just put the people in the in the you know seats. All right. What about this? We we have your idea where the where the race car drivers are controlling the uh, like cars remotely, but we strap hardened criminals inside, like people on uh, oh, life. That's in death prison. race. We strap them inside. Yeah. Well, is it? Yeah. I thought death race was where they just. Okay. No, it's like. Well, well, I only watched the first one race then, I guess. with Jason Statham, but, you know, it's basically just race death, um, you know, lethal racing in prison for your freedom or some crap like that. But I'm all for that, too, if we're going to discount the human rights of, you know, pedophiles and serial killers and rapists, which I'm for. But until then, you know, remote driving and I'm OK with like drone cars just racing you know, with a racer because know. there's no danger involved. It seems kind of lame. Okay, Jackson, not everybody has to die, but th think about it this way. This would open <laughs> up a whole new realm of players. It would allow people like Charlie's dad to play. And all. just imagine all the oh. Asian nerdy teenagers who would dominate the NASCAR scene all of a sudden. It would lead yeah, to like... Faker becomes the best driver. Yeah. That would be pretty fucking mm -hmm. cool. That's all it's going to turn into, though, is just like, you know, gamers taking over. The racing industry. What about the poor racers? <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> if they can't keep up with the fucking some nerd who's never driven a car before, if they that's on you. Should have been better, bitch. It's basically like what is it, Robot Wars, where they just control a robot to fight, right? Battle bots, robot wars, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. See, that's a good question in the chat. So would that be considered a regular sport or an esport? That'd be an eSport, I'd think. Yeah. Yeah. Because, again, you're not putting yourself in any kind of physical exertion. Yeah. Well, mm. not that you need to. Like, poker is considered a sport, and it's not like you're exerting yourself in poker. I wouldn't consider poker a sport. Is it? Well, you'd be alone in that thought. That is weird what? as fuck, because if poker is a sport, then so is chess. And if chess is a sport, then... Yeah. I mean, at, fuck, at that point, every nerd is, a, is an athlete. I, w I would consider poker and chess like competitive games for sure, but sports. Well, they are sports. Mm. They can call them sports. I don't agree with it. It's not at the Olympics. <laughs> Is poker at the Olympics? <laughs> I'd like that, actually. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. High stakes. <laughs> Countries are like betting and gambling. <laughs> All of their like treasury funds to uh, compete in the olympics poker tournament that'd be oh, pretty cool actually see now that would actually get people to care if countries officially gambled on the sport forget all this fucking the mm -hmm. spirit of the sportsmanship horse shit we all know that that nobody cares let let us gamble that would be cool yeah that'd be nice has anyone given a fuck about the olympics in like the last decade i never hear anything about it anymore how mm. dare you you son of a bitch that's that's one of the longest standing tournaments in human history. It dates no, back to ancient Greece. How could you? Is, is yeah. that a, is that a so. bit? I don't know. What you, I don't know what you're talking. It comes about. from Olympia. It, it can uh, still it, suck, Jackson. Why do you? No, it's tradition. It's our, our history. It comes from the Spartans and Athenians. How could you, Charlie? How could you hate the Olympics? I don't get it. It's a, it's a cool tournament. No, it's not. It's fucking boring. Hey, Jackson, when was the last How time you watched the Winter Olympics? I don't know. When was the yeah, last time you heard anyone... That's, 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 that's not an Olympic tradition. That's, that's new. <laughs> oh, I don't care that's, about that. Oh, that's what, they, didn't, they didn't have the winter didn't in Olympia? It. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah, you know, the ancient Greeks didn't know how to ski, so there was no ancient uh, uh, Winter Olympics. They feared uh, the snow, so they never went out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, Jackson. I don't think anybody really, at least not no one our age, that isn't an athlete or somehow involved in sports himself. I don't think any of us really give a fuck about the Olympics being canceled. I mean, are what you are heartbroken? You no, it's just no, it's just you two that don't care. The no. world cares about the Olympics. I Absolutely, I don't think so. I, Jackson, I would be shocked. Yeah. Um. No, the only reason I ever cared about the Olympics is it made me laugh because the name, so the one of the committee members of the Olympics, his name's Dick Pound, 
and his name was trending and it made me chuckle. And that was the last time I cared about the Olympics. <laughs> it's a cool name, though. That's a rough name, buddy. I mean, I don't know if, which is worse, Dick Pound or X hashtag A12 AR14 or whatever the fuck he called this kid. True. There was an Olympic skier named Fanny Schmeller, and that always <laughs> makes me laugh. <fun. laughs> <laughs> there was a German, a German skier named Fanny Schmeller. I really like that one. <laughs> I'm looking him up right now to see his, his feats. Oh, uh, here he is. I think he was a skier. She, Fanny Schmeller. <laughs> yeah. She is a German Foreman Alpine skier. Uh, she competed for Germany at the 2010 Winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. She did not place any medals. Because everyone was too busy laughing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the name's so bad. I, mean, I, mean, this I would change that immediately. This is bad for the athletes, too. Like, Fanny Schmeller's Wikipedia page only has a single sentence, on, two sentences on it. Yeah. No one cares about the Olympics. Yeah, seeing well, this, what, too. What? They're, they're Olympians. That's all they would have on their Wikipedia page. It's three what sentences, Jackson. What else are they going to do? These people have been training their entire lives for the Olympics. Exactly. Yeah. There'd be a whole story to tell. <laughs> yeah, right. No there should be some the Olympics. Here. She's done more than you ever could. You haven't been to the Olympics for anything. Uh, well, if they make competitive gaming an Olympic sport, I might show up. Well, technically, that's not true, Jackson. I also have not ever won a gold medal. So has she really done more than me? Yeah, she went. She got accepted into the Olympics. She, yeah, she uh, but, was still invited mm -hmm. to the Olympics, which is still by itself an incredibly impressive feat. Yeah, I disagree. I think anyone nah. can do it. <laughs> do it then. <laughs> Come on, I'll think about prove it. Prove it. I'll think yeah, about what? it. It's no, not fair. Prove po it. You gotta put your money where your mouth is. Poker is what the sport do you want me to yet? compete in? I think archery would be a cool sport. Oh or, my god, uh, Jesus. What? What's wrong with archery? It's so fucking. Have you ever watched Olympic <laughs> archery? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Mm. You wouldn't have said that. I don't loud. think I've ever watched anything <laughs> to do with the Olympics. <laughs> Apart from Fanny Schmeller, that's the only thing I remember. Oh, and also the uh, the guy who, like the, those montages of people breaking their legs on like high jump and stuff. Mm. I've always I've always enjoyed those. Imagine how how uh, just debilitating that feels. Not only to break your fucking leg, which is like the most painful spot to break, but like to to train your whole life to go to the Olympics and then in your in your event that you've been waiting your life for, you fucking snap your leg. That's that's an emotional pain more than it is a physical pain at that point. <laughs> no, I think it's more physical, Jax. <laughs> Not saying no, that. It's emotional too. What? I'm sure. It's absolutely emotional. It definitely is. They train years for that shit. Oh, absolutely. I'm just saying no, in the moment. Yeah. To have your leg bend in half or bent just the wrong mm. way. God, I'm so glad I've never broken no, I anything. I think the emotional pain would be even more overwhelming than that. You'd know immediately. Hmm. That there's no way you're competing ever again. Yeah, maybe. But then you just have a big smile on your face knowing you won't have to embarrass yourself at the Olympics again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So which video game would you guys pick if, if it had to be included in the Olympics? For esports? Like to watch or compete in? Yeah. Both, I guess? To watch, I think Rocket League is the obvious answer. I think that would be that kind actually of like right makes a lot of sense. That is very relatable to just the yeah. older audience, right? It's it's racing and soccer. Exactly. It's, <laughs> yeah, anyone can comprehend that. It's just that. soccer, right? More or less with cars. Mm, is soccer in the Olympics? Oh, well, it's FIFA. I don't. I actually don't think it's in the no Olympics. Idea. That's a good question. Is soccer? It is. People are saying it is. I would assume it is. It's one of the biggest sports in the world. Well, it is mm. the biggest sport in the world, but they have FIFA, which is like a super corrupt organization with like a monopoly on soccer itself. So I didn't know. Right, if football is not soccer. Apparently. Yeah, but you're underestimating Whatever. how corrupt the Olympic uh, committee is too. I mean, Dick Pound and soccer. FIFA owns the rights to FIFA, not soccer in general. That would suck if they did. Yeah, like you're never allowed to play soccer in your backyard unless you get FIFA's permission. <laughs> Paying royalties if you just want to kick the ball with your kid. <laughs> no, Honestly, okay. Well, I agree. Maybe. I think Rocket League would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Honestly, can't even think of anything that's that 
bit of a hit. So video games? I was going to say, I was actually going to say chess. Like, I think that would, like, the mental uh, acuity needed to win chess, I think, would be something the Olympians would be proud of. So they'd put it in the Olympics, and I think that'd be good. But if we're talking video games, then I guess I could go for online chess. I wonder if it's demoralizing for um, chess, people who specialize in chess and actually do it competitively. Do you guys think that they're, that they must have been maybe just less inclined or just be less motivated than before since now AI can beat them easily? Yeah, I don't know. That's mm. hard to say. That's like the only game that AI can beat someone in consistently. Well, I thought no, it was Go. I thought there was Go also was Go, could... but What's Go I remember with Chess, they, they had this one AI computer thingy, like Deep Blue or something, and they put it up against... Deep Mind. It could be. I, I remember the name Blue or something. It's a AI, and they put it up against, I believe, the champion at the time, and he lost, and he lost hardcore. And he got so pissy about it. He was like, oh, this wasn't fair. It was analyzing my moves and it can think ahead and it just not fair. <laughs> oh no shit, what did he think an AI was? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like he thought it was just a fucking calculator that he could beat and he got his ass <laughs> handed to him. And to see him get that pissy about it and indignant made me... I, it just, I wonder if they even have as much motivation to get into the sport anymore. I look at me now. I'm calling it a sport. Fuck me. It was deep blue. Told you. Yeah, I looked it up. That's mm. interesting. That's a that's an interesting little story. Yeah. But no, I doubt they're. I, I don't think they're demotivated. It's not like they're going up against AI or anything. They're just going up against each other. I just. Yeah, it's I, not like we're building AI for the premise of fighting chess champions in the future or anything. It's not like their their job or hobby security is any in any danger. They're still going to be fighting dweebs from chess class. I guess I'm just thinking that they no longer can be, they can be the best human, but they can no longer be the best. You know, that is a, that is taking away a little bit of the accomplishment, I guess. The upper limit has been, it's been brought down as far as what you can mm. accomplish is. No matter how much you train, it doesn't matter. You're, you're never going to be the superhuman chess robot. Still being the best human is a pretty big accomplishment, in my opinion. That's a uh, that's something to be proud of. And plus, robots are always going to be better than fucking humans in any in everything and anything. Anyway, there's probably going to be a fucking uh, podcasting bot in the future that's way better than us. No, yeah, I don't think his so. name I don't is think Joe robots. Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> nice, solid. I think yeah, there's no. certain things robots will never be able to replace. Like what? Like what? Personality. No. Attractiveness. That'll oh, they be, will. What, they've, already, they've already been in both of those things. Project Melody. Well, she's a <laughs> human being, though. What are you talking about? She's a... Not to ruin it for you, there's sorry. still... Yeah, but there's still robotics involved in that, isn't there? Like, it's a it's software algorithm. Software algorithm? What the fuck are you talking... It's mocap. But th there's, uh, like, rendering, like it's not <laughs> a real human. <laughs> what is that? So, th so the robot itself is more attractive. What? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm fucking lost. I feel like I'm talking in deep blue. <laughs> the the robot itself Project is Melody. more attractive? How is that an argument for yeah. it's an AI? I don't get it. Well, people, I was just saying, people can be attracted to robots. So people are already more attractive to robots than humans. What does that have to do with the melody? You said, well, Project Melody is is kind of like a... She's not human. <laughs> she is. The person behind it is human, but she's not. That, well, Jackson, it's a video game character. That's like calling every video game character a robot. Yeah, so I'm saying this premise there, though, for like people being more attracted to robots or anything fake or digital. So if we made a really it. hot cyberbot. If we made a really hot cyber, Charlie's saying that <laughs> robots could never be more attractive than humans. I'm saying there's already basis there that that's that's not true. People can be more attracted to robots. No, okay, but he's not talking visually, Jackson. That's if you're saying you know they're looking at this little avatar of a little lollycon robot 
and jacking off to it. Yeah, sure. But, you know, they also jack off to ponies. That doesn't mean ponies are going to surpass humans anytime soon. Some would argue otherwise, which is <laughs> that, That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Jackson wins. <laughs> Horses are kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Parties are more attractive. No, I think at some point we will c- cross that creepiness threshold um, of robots being able to, I mean, basically function as humans. All all our brains are it's basically just a bioelectrical chemical machine, right? Just running algor- algorithms all day. I just looked up progress in ar- artificial intelligence on Wikipedia and the uh, ratings are... Oh, by the way, they made an AI play Starcraft. Esports? Wow, I don't know this. Esports continue to provide additional benchmarks. Facebook's AI, DeepMind, and others have engaged with the popular Starcraft franchise of video games. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Broad classes of outcome for an AI... Wait, why are you surprised at that? AIs have been in computers games forever. No, I know, like, the, you know, the computer... and. Uh, playing against you yeah but i didn't know they actually tried to make a supercomputer just to beat you at league of legends or something (laughs) which would be Mm. fucking (laughs) hilarious oh that would be cool so if i was riot games i would invest in that man i would buy one of those ais build a supercomputer and then like every once in a while i would hold a tournament of just the ai versus the best team in league of legends on the scene oh that'd be cool yeah now can you beat this thing on hardcore um, so the levels are level one optimal. It is not possible to perform better. Note, some of these entries were solved by humans. Superhuman performs better than all humans. High human performs better than most humans. Par human performs similarly to most humans. And subhuman performs worse than most humans. So I think all of the AI we have right now is basically... Uh, actually, I guess we do have superhuman AI then. Yeah, already. so we've already out-leveled ourselves? In some tasks, I guess. Like Go and Chess. Yeah, and this is uh, this is only in like the mid-2010s, I would assume this happened. So 10 years or, or so from now, Charlie, there's definitely going to be uh, attractive bots that out-compete. Oh, shit, Jack. Maybe. Uh, Charlie. Games of imperfect knowledge provide new challenges to AI in the area of game theory. The most prominent milestone in this area was brought to a close by Libratus' poker victory in 2017. There we go. Uh There you go. That doesn't feel nice, does it, Charlie, to know that you will never be the top poker player? It's a goal I've strived for all my life. Yeah, that is rough to hear. Superhuman AI for heads up, no limit poker. Libratus beats top professionals. Oof. How do you? What would hurt you? That's a weird one, though, because it's not like you can be super good at poker consistently. Because you're only as good as the two cards you have. So that means the fucking AI yeah. was bluffing half the time. <laughs> Wait, well, yeah. So it's just really good at lying. That's scary. That is scary, and also it's like so really how, good at faking human emotions. How the fuck does it lie, though? You know, part of poker is you, you know, poker face. So did they give this thing like a rubber face to just do with emotions? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got, it's got those, it's got, it's got those shades on, hiding its eyes. You can't tell. <laughs> they what just, it, it's they just put cartoon shades on a TV monitor. <laughs> I'm trying to find if there's any mention of if it had a poker face. Uh, it's like a That's probably why it was winning so much. You, you you just can't read it at all. You can't read its emotions or anything. That would be a shitty it study. Though, face it was probably playing didn't. like a bitch. It was probably fo- folding on any hand that wasn't like high suited cards or something. It probably played like a little bitch. Yeah, because okay. poker's about taking risks too. Yeah. What robot would take a risk? Exactly. But it knows it's going to be decommissioned if it loses. <laughs> just- <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fuck this. I, th- this paper is like 90 pages long. I'll read it for next week and give us an update on how the fuck exactly this little bastard won so hardcore. <laughs> I'd like to know that as well. That seems like a very interesting one. Mm. Okay. Oh, what? Okay, it's something I really wanted to talk about. Have you guys seen Adele's photos? Uh, yeah. The new... Oh, yeah, the fat stuff. Well, the 
the no, no longer fat, fat stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's impressive. She looks great. She does look great. It is impressive. Good for her. But she literally the only reason she was trending was because a bunch of fat people were salty because they saw her as some sort of a race traitor for having lost weight. Wasn't just uh, yeah. wasn't just overweight people or anything, Kaya. I saw a post from some like super skinny nerd guy with like six hundred thousand likes saying, "If you didn't love Adele when she was fat, and you're congratulating her now, you're fat phobic evil person, and don't care about beauty or something." It was really weird shit, like a super weird take. Like uh, they it, they conflated congratulating someone for losing weight to hating fat people. Yeah, it's here. Fucking can, wild. We pl- can we please not celebrate Adele for losing weight like it's the ultimate achievement? The news articles and tweets are disgusting. It's not the ultimate achievement, man, but it is an achievement. You congratulate someone for beating cancer. Just all this like coping. Getting healthier in general. Please stop saying Adele had a quote glow up. We have no idea what her health was slash is like, and this is just reinforcing the skinny ideal or the concept that the skinnier you get, the prettier you get. I, th- I think it does... Hmm. It's amazing how there is a debate. This is like flat earth levels of reality denial that there's real people out there in the real world who think that there's absolutely no correlation between having your arteries clogged with cholesterol and your health. You know, fat doesn't mean unhealthy to these people well they're like anti-vaxxers then because you know losing fat is objectively the healthier option yep adele is the same person she was not a better person not a more acceptable person the same the growth is on the inside she is a strong she might not be a better person but she's definitely a healthier person yeah tell these lunatics jesus oh well that was my celebrity story Jackson, you still like it on some topic. I I gave you plenty of topics. I talked about the Olympics. I talked about Star Wars. You didn't bring up the the chess. (laughs) I uh, I even brought up Adele. Mm. That was a good topic. (laughs) And the naming convention. (laughs) Thank you, Jackson. Of of Elon Musk's new child. You're welcome. I've been studying the news this week for you boys. Mm. Oh, have you seen Miss Monopoly? I heard about it. Yeah, they made a... Uh, female monopoly thing right yeah based god damn it i clicked away from the tweet yeah it's miss monopoly so it's supposed to be mr monopoly's uh niece and on the cover so uh, fuck it we don't need visuals but on the cover just imagine the most unlikable blue check mark you know journalist type woman with like a starbucks coffee in her hand looking smug and it says one of the promotional materials says that she is Mr. Monopoly Man's niece and she's a self-made businesswoman. And all I could think was, so how can you be Mr. Monopoly Man's niece and be self-made? Like, how does that work? Like, yeah, yeah. My, my uncle's a fat billionaire. I'm self-made. I came from nothing. That's like saying Kylie Jenner is self-made. Remember when people were congratulating her for oh. being like a self-made billionaire or whatever? Yeah. That shit was fucking dumb. She had a tough upbringing, Jackson. What do you know about being extremely good looking and wealthy, huh? It's hard. Self made at 18. You don't know her life, Jackson. She could have gone through all sorts of hardships. All you really know about her, Jackson, is that when she was born, her family had millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish, you, I wish you would at least try and get into the shoes of other people, Jackson. Instead of looking down on them. I'm trying really hard. So. Listen how fucking condescending this is. And if there's, you know, our female listeners, maybe see if you can uh, see if this feels empowering. Female players get 1900 at the start of the game and male players get 1500. When passing go, <laughs> female players get 240 bucks, while male players only get the standard $200 as the normal game. In addition, the game differs from regular Monopoly in that properties are replaced by inventions women created or contributed to, including Wi-Fi, to which Heidi Lamar and Radia Radia Perlman contributed. Modern shapewear... I find that so offensive. They're basically saying women need an advantage to win or stand a chance. (laughs) I was thinking the same thing. If you're a woman, I would feel so insulted by that right there. 
That's like when you're a kid and your dad lets you like win something just out of the kindness of his heart. It's like, oh, you know, I'll let you win this. It feels like shit. Like, it feels tokens, bad to get that. Tokens have been replaced with new ones. A notebook and pen, a jet, a glass, a watch, a barbell. Because, you know, bitches love barbells, you guys. All the girls I've ever met, they love a barbell. Atmos Monopoly's white hat. Chance and community chest cards also provide different payouts for men and women. <laughs> so, yeah, nothing more empowering. Nothing more empowering to tell your little daughter with whom you will be playing this that, you know, honey, sweetie, the only way for you to ever get ahead in life is if you cheat. And if you, if you help, you know, if I as a man, I will give you extra money. You can't earn it on your own. No, sweet, no. You're not equal. It's fucking dumb. It is extremely <laughs> fucking dumb. Why, why are they fighting this war in Monopoly of all places? Like this, <laughs> this, uh, this statue to capitalism or whatever. It's like everything they stand against, but now they're turning it into this like war zone of equality. It's like That's cute. Uh, it says uh, on the cover itself. It says the first game where women make more than men. <laughs> what? I, I didn't realize that there's video you, games or board games, sorry, where, where are we discriminating <laughs> against women? Is there some sort of a gender war and fucking Ludo or something? Yeah, what, what is happening? They can, they can realistically earn more in Monopoly. It's a video, it's a fucking board game. There's no kind of like societal pressures in Monopoly. You could win. It's women a have been oppressed in really Monopoly for years, Jackson. That's actually a good point. Okay, maybe sometimes in the real life there can be barriers for women, but this is a board game. There's, your boss isn't there to sexually harass you. <laughs> why, why, why would you have difficulties winning this game fair and square? Why? <laughs> it has to be oh God, so, so dumb. And also, imagine being the boyfriend playing this game and your girlfriend is like actually unironically into it. Like, she's like, yeah, so I get an extra 40 bucks. Huh. Yeah, that's right. Now you know how it feels. Oh, that has to be insufferable. I, d I doubt they have anyone to play the game with. I, it's just going on their, their bookshelf or whatever. I would be beyond shocked if a single man purchased one of those to play unironically. Those rule yeah. sets will never come in. Oh, you don't know, man. I'm sure somebody out there is willing to try this out and virtue signal about it. Yeah, that's, but, a, that's a good point. Yeah. Like a Kotaku writer, like Nathan or something, mm. he'd buy that and be like, I played Feminist Monopoly and felt the pain. Now I know who's, what women go through on a daily. Please DM me. Who's Nathan? Nathan's the guy that keeps writing about, like, why simp should be banned. Simp is a slur, stuff like that. <laughs> what? I've not heard this. Yeah, I, I Tell don't remember his last name, but... Yeah, there's this dude named Nathan who writes like these fucking terrible goddamn articles. I think he's That's the same one that- That's Kotaku, but what sets him apart? Yeah. Well, he doesn't like the word simp at all. He, he takes a huge issue with simp. <laughs> he wrote an article about video game companies donating and why it's a bad thing, stuff like that. He's just a bad, bad, hot take kind of person. Do you know his last name by any chance? I think it's Grayson. I'm not positive. Grayson Nathan. seems like it's ringing bells. Nathan Grayson, what is he, a fucking Marvel character? Yeah, uh, I mean, in his head, I imagine he's fighting the good fight with journalism. Twitch is cracking down on simp emotes over harassment fears. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's his article, right? Yeah, that's his article. Okay, um, I got it right then. The yeah, other, the rest doesn't seem to be too uh, bad. Oh, never mind. Doctor disrespects shtick takes a dangerous turn into spreading coronavirus conspiracy theories. Ooh. Mm. What? The internet agrees that Elon Musk is a trillionaire villain. Ba ba ba. He tweets about Valorant a lot. I'm That's playing a new thing. Hmm. You can finally apologize for being crap in Overwatch. Eh, seems to have just boring takes, to be honest. Is he not the one that wrote about, like, well, I may have gotten the guy wrong. There's a guy that was writing about, like, why video game companies shouldn't donate money to help people and stuff like that. Is that not Nathan? Because that guy had a wild assortment of articles, from what I remember. Oh, look it up. I mean, what was the point? CD Projekt Red donated a couple million dollars for COVID and he said it's terrible. He said it's a bad thing. And then he shamed every video game company that's donated money.
Really? God, I hate shit like that. Well, yeah. I'm now looking at an article called Major Video Game Companies Could Be Doing More for COVID-19 Relief. That's the one. That's the one. Oh, that it, this is Ian oh, wait, Walker. So he wasn't shaming them for... He's saying more should be done. No, 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 no. It, read the article. Uh, it's not. He's not saying there's more that could be done. He's saying it's terrible what they're doing. It's a bad thing. It's not enough. They should donate everything. This guy's a billionaire. Why is all of his money not in this? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, my God. They always do that. So it's the typical... Yeah. Why didn't you donate all of your wealth instead of just, you know, more than I give? These people are always such fucking cunts with this take. And it's always the yeah, same. Yeah. It, it, my man, critical. like, you write this whole article <laughs> criticizing people who donate, like, millions of dollars, and then, you know, did you donate even a single dollar? Did ya? I think Probably the cute not. part is, I, I decided to look into it because I got curious. Na is it Nathan that wrote that article? Kaya? No, this is no, this is What's your Ian issue Walker. With Nathan. <laughs> okay, well, I wanted to get the name right. Constantly attacking Nathan. Oh, I thought it was Nathan because his fucking simping thing must have been fresh in my mind. But that Ian guy, uh, I decided to look into it. He hasn't donated shit, and Kotaku itself is owned by a multi-million dollar company that has mm -hmm. recently taken no pay cuts and paid themselves more money instead of helping with COVID. So, I mean, this dude really should have called out his own fucking parent company if he wants to be this noble virtue signaling guy. So but let's go over this. Job. I'm gonna read well, yeah, a little. Well, yeah, but if he wants to uh, fight the good fight, he's got to take the risk, baby. No, you think he actually wants to fight the good fight? Nope. Nope. Exactly. CD Projekt co-founder and CEO Mar Markin Iwinski is a billionaire. He owns 12 million shares of the company he helped establish in 1994, whose stock is now worth uh, 368 Polish zloty. <laughs> what the fuck is a Polish <laughs> zloty? It's it winter like currency. Goofy. It might as well just give the price in Animal Crossing turnips. How the fuck am I supposed to know how much that is in actual money? This makes Iwinski's net worth, based on his stake in CD Projekt alone, around 4.4 billion Polish zlotys. Or a little more than, oh thank you, 1 billion US dollars. Last month, Iwinski announced that he and his company's uh, other board members had somehow pulled together 2 million Polish zlotys of their own money to combat the spread of COVID-19. Lot. Yeah, I see where this is going. Here yeah. we go. I knew it. They always boil it down to percentages. That would amount to just 0.04% of his net worth. Now, my question to Ian Walker publicly. Did you donate 0.04% of your net worth? However much it may be? Did you? He donated 0.04% of his time to write that magnificent article, Kaya. And his time is worth mm. more than that. Of course. You don't get it. Rent in San Francisco is expensive. He can't afford it. By the way, the, I mean, the ch you, Ian, you realize that the cherries don't give a fuck about percentages, right? They don't calculate. They don't feed people with percentages. They feed people with actual money, with concrete numbers, which his one million bucks is still more than the zero dollars you donated or the zero Polish Zalampatus that you didn't donate. <laughs> Uh, how many Zalampadus did you donate? Yeah, how many credits <laughs> did you use in the Republic? <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a Star Wars that reference. That is a Star Wars reference. Do you like it? Yeah, it's the same shit. It's literally... Yeah. He's not saying that people shouldn't donate, Charlie. It's literally just the same old, why aren't you doing more while I'm doing literally nothing sh shit. That's Fuck not you. true. Well, I, maybe it's not in the article, but I went through his Twitter and that's kind of the shit he was saying. At least back then when he wrote that. Oh, yeah, maybe he had an attitude like, you know, don't even bother. Yeah, I mean, that's what a lot of people on Twitter have the attitude with, oh, 25 million, only 0.1% of your wealth. Yeah, we don't even want this. Take it back. I, yeah, I don't understand what good these, these, uh, these articles do. It's not like these articles are going to convince any billionaires to donate more. In it's, fact, it's probably, it's probably like convincing them that it's just not... Well, yeah, you like to have that kind of publicity. Yeah, there's no one's being attacked for not donating. It's just the people that are donating that are getting attacked. So why the fuck would people keep donating? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's always it's envy, man. Dumb. It's always the same two takes. It, it's, well, I know he donated a million dollars, but if you really run the numbers and look at the, but it's actually only like 1% of his net worth that he donated. And it's the shit where they now... Uh, <laughs> they somehow find it in themselves to pontificate on how much somebody is allowed to own. So they go, nobody needs three cars. That's money he could have donated to people in need. Eat shit. Eat the rich, Kaya. Eat the rich. 
the fucking arrogance it, it has to take to in, you know pe counting people's stuff and going nobody needs that much yeah it's not about need what the fuck who, who the fuck are you my mom <laughs> you don't get to decide what i need or what i get to have i didn't it's like yes nobody needs it probably what's his face um yeah i'm forgetting what's the tv late tv show host with a gigantic chin jay leno jay leno he has like hundreds mm. of cars he doesn't fucking need them but he has the money and he bought them what do you want he didn't fucking steal them all in a heist and you know who's not having a PR disaster? Jay Leno, because he hasn't donated shit. He's a lot <laughs> yeah. better off for not donating. So why the fuck would anyone bother with the way they get attacked for it? Exactly. And that's, you know, if Jay Leno right now donated $10 million, it would do objective good. That would be a positive thing. But every article written about him, the first sentence would be Jay Leno, who hoards luxury vehicles and then slam him for it, for not doing more. Stop biting the uh, hand that feeds you. Yeah, it's just constant complaining and whining on Twitter. Everything on Twitter is complaining and whining about anything and everything. Yeah, Twitter sucks. Twitter sucks, baby. Hot take. Mm. I wish it didn't exist. I, tr I would wonder where we would be if Twitter didn't exist. I think it'd be a net positive. I think all of like society would be better off without Twitter. And Facebook, but yeah. I don't know, yeah, you do agreed. have to do some self-curating though, like I said, with the muted words or something, and you have to take some steps to lighten up your feed, which is why I follow like a hundred cute animal accounts. I just need to see a kitten once in a while while I no, scroll it's through. Not it's, but it's, Kai, it's not just on a personal level. It's not for your personal satisfaction. It's just knowing that these people are out here just constantly complaining and arguing on Twitter, doing nothing beneficial for society. It's just... I don't know, demoralizing that that exists as a... I think, yeah, but it's a, rewarded. Thing. Like, angry opinions always, I think, get more engagement than, uh, you know, some tepid... Which which I think we're arguing Twitter, like, reinforces. Mm. Like, yeah. those kinds of behaviors are becoming more prominent, like, prominent in society because of, like, things like Twitter, <laughs> which perpetuate... Yeah, absolutely. Of, and, and they know this, they know. The people who run these places I, I mean they can tell us all the time about well we're we're making the new quality filter if someone so much as gives you the stink eye we're gonna ban them and we're not gonna allow curse words or slurs or hate speech or but yeah cool but at some point we did find out that facebook for example its algorithms are tuned so it will show you news it knows will make you angry because that drives more engagement mm -hmm. it keeps you on the website because you know, Facebook has a vested interest in you getting angry and typing out a long post and engaging. And then people getting a angry at you and engaging. So no doubt Twitter is doing the same shit where they intentionally just... I mean, I, I don't even remember the last time I saw a viral tweet that wasn't literally just white people bad or some fem female incel going uh, how you know on and on about how awful men are because she was on a terrible date once those are those seem to be the only things yeah. that go viral anymore it's just always outrage or negative stuff that yeah becomes viral yeah yeah but to my credit my instagram is still pure you guys never follow anyone besides animal accounts i can go on there it's just the purest thing man it's just a bunch of cute yeah animals. Uh, actually that's that's a good point it, does Instagram have the same problem? I've never seen any kind no, of... No, I haven't seen shit like that. Instagram's a little different, though, because it's just posting pictures with captions. It's not yeah. really a lot of people engaging with each other, whereas, like, Facebook and Twitter, that's directly engaging in the dumbest fucking people on the planet. But, in, yeah, but Instagram, you post a picture and you leave one comment and that's it. Yeah, even though, I mean, yeah, technically Instagram you is the could, best social media. Technically you could engage with people. I think, as far as I know, they don't even have a word limit or anything. So you could, and they have replies and likes, just like everything else. Um, they hide yeah, you can't their post like a count statement. Now. No, they don't. Yeah, they, they do. do. So they started yeah, recently. In some regions. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, oh, so it's I still... I know they do here. It makes the numbers vague. It doesn't show you down to the last digits, but I think it does something like this post was liked by you and a thousand other people mm. or many other people, something like that. So to discourage basically this addiction some people have. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think I like Instagram, even though the it is instant gratification yeah. full of fake, fake ass people just posting their influencer crap. One thing I will tell you, I don't like about those kitten accounts, though, and just animal accounts in general. So all the ones that I follow are. Oh, yeah, I know what you're going to say. Fo yeah, they're I foster accounts. Keep going. And they don't seem to realize that the main reason I follow you is to brighten up my day. And the, but then every once in a while, like one out of a hundred posts will be just the most Debbie Downer, hey, let me ruin your day kind of shit. Like, oh. it'll be a photo of a cute kitten and you go, aw, like. And you can see that little heart pop up and then you glance at the description. It says like, this is Snowflake. She has feline HIV and her legs were broken when she was attacked by our dog. She's in very bad condition and her eyes has an infection now too. We might have to put her down this evening. Please pray for little Snowflake who is now in immense pain. And you go, Jesus Christ. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? I didn't want to know that. Why, why did you dump this on me? I'm here to be happy. How dare not... you? How dare you not support Snowflake in a moment of need? The guy took away the like. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Snowflake. You're no longer cute to me because you got feline HIV and a bad eye. FIV, <laughs> whatever it's called. No, no, it's not. I mean, it is cute, but I also don't want to see that sort of thing. You know, it's, I want to see happy kittens and I want to at least believe that they're happy and taken care of. Not this... Yeah. Well, real life's not like that, Kaya, I'm afraid. Yeah, I know, but it's not fucking real life. It's Instagram. Come on, just show me the good parts. This is why I'm not a uh, foster daddy myself, because I know I couldn't handle those parts. I just want to see kittens playing. That's it, man. Not the sad parts of it. Where they're like... I thought, I thought you were going to say the thing you hate from these cat accounts is when the owners pretend to be the cats. Oh my whatever, God. Because I hate that shit. I entirely forgot about I hate that. that, that shit. Is, this is a phenomenon nobody's talking about for some reason, but you do notice it, right, uh, Jackson? It's, yeah. it's oh, always exclusively white bitches, white middle-aged women and young uh, girls who make accounts in their... Yeah, you sound like Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you sound like Twitter. It, it's true, though. It's true, though. It's always... These 20 something year old or 30 something year old white women who, you know, I'm sure they're good people, but they make accounts in their animals' names and then they talk like they're animals. They're like, oh, mommy gave me my blankie right now and then she fed me. <sighs> ha ha, I'm so cozy. And it's literally just them role playing as their pets. It's not cute. Stop. I, when yeah, I first weird. saw that, I thought it was kind of cute, but yeah, it's, it's way too much. It's, it's really weird. The first yeah. time, yes, but now it's almost every animal account. It's like, <laughs> okay, the the gimmick is over. It's played out. Do something else. Do something yeah, new. It feel if it, it feels like a fetish almost. Like they actually enjoy role playing as their as their cats or their dogs to get away from their mundane lives. Like it's, their it's their first owners almost. It's also the most self congratulatory <laughs> thing. It's like my human made breakfast today, and it was the yummiest thing. I'm so I'm so lucky to have such an amazing mommy. Oh, I wish she was back from work already. <laughs> well, she's like tweeting this from work or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Just stop. It's okay. You don't have to pretend to be your cat. Just show it and go, this is my cat. I love him. <laughs> Those accounts do get more engagement, though, weirdly enough. So people do enjoy it. Do they? Well, yeah, it's like on yeah. Reddit, you know, the heckin' good boys, that kind of shit. What? No. Well, they talk like it's that. Not like, that look bad. at this heckin' good boy doing heckin' heckin' good good stuff, good boy. Oh. Yeah, well, that's not role play. That's just fucking spazzing out. Yeah, that's Reddit well, talk. Well, it's not. It's not role play, but it's that kind of like baby talking stuff. Hmm. Yeah, that one's bad too. No, I think the role playing as your cat is worse. <laughs> yeah. Way worse. Oh. Alrighty, do you want to wrap? Yes. Okay, this has been episode 180. It turns out I checked. Jackson, where nice. can people go for more? Uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes to keep you entertained during this quarantine. Um, yeah, head on over there and see if you like what we put out. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.